everything now! An interactive comedy show on Twitch where you, the viewers, are in control. Featuring special guests from all over the Twitch community and the Los Angeles comedy scene. Enter a variety of wild scenarios with colorful characters and help steer the story in whatever direction you want. You can vote in polls to make choices, submit images over Twitter and Discord. You can pay to play sound effects. Road end in 100 feet. What the f***? It's your show too, friend. Hop on in and experience everything now. All rise <laughs> for the honorable me. Ah, oh, what the fuck? Hold on. Ugh. Hold on. All right. There we go. Let me take that again. All rise for the honorable me, Judge Learned Hand. Welcome, denizens of Now York, to the Superior Court of Now York, where justice rules. Yes. You, my fellow citizens, are here to serve your highest calling as citizens of New York to be a jury of the peers of these defendants who have committed or allegedly committed. Don't sneeze during bless my you, whole bless thing. You. Come on. I'm sorry, Judge. Take that outside. Anyway. Anyway, folks, if you're here, it means that you are jurors tonight. Yes, we've got a slew of alleged, alleged criminals who are accused of crimes that you'll remind me of because they seem to have misplaced my docket. During tonight's proceedings, we'll ask some questions. We'll try to get to the bottom of these cases and hopefully it'll all just be one big misunderstanding. But if you find them guilty of these crimes, you will help us decide what sentence uh, is fit for those crimes. Of course, there's other ways that you can help us get to the bottom of these crimes besides asking questions. Uh, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, for $5 tonight, you can call a witness to the witness stand. Yes, donate $5 at any point tonight and ask to bring someone to the stand. It could be a celebrity, it could be a fictional character. Ideally, it's somebody somehow related to the case. Typically, it's not, but I will Never stop reminding you and pleading that you call somebody who is related to the case so that we can get some valuable testimony. Of course, the choice is yours. For $5, bring anybody you like to the witness stand. Uh, I'll also remind you that, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll also remind you that if you subscribe at any point this evening, you will get to submit written testimony. Yes, it'll look something like this. Exploring with Pat said no snitching, which sort of defeats the purpose of submitting testimony in a, in a certain way. But of course, it's not up to me to tell you what to write. If you subscribe at any, port to, any point tonight, you can write whatever you like and we will display it in front of the whole courthouse. And of course, if you submit images in the Discord, which I highly encourage you to do, join the Discord, there should be a link in the chat, you can submit visual evidence that we will display right here on that television. Is there a, is there a placeholder piece of evidence in that uh, television, Bailiff, that I can sh show to demonstrate? In about two seconds there will be, Jack. Okay, great. Uh, so, join the Everything Now Show Discord, submit some visual evidence that we can display on our television. The image you submit may, might be the turning point in one of these cases, it could get somebody off that is innocent. It could lock someone away who is guilty of their crime. There you go, Judge. Take a look. It'll look something like this. So this is clearly an impactful piece of evidence that surely uh, changed the tide of some important case that we had earlier. That's my dog, Noodles. That's our bailiff's dog, Noodles. It's funny we call him Noodles, but he loves to stand on sandwiches. That is, about him. that is funny. I'm not, I don't know if I totally get the irony, but it is well, silly. We would call them burgers if we were, if we were doing the uh, straight forward. It might make more sense if you were called spaghetti or something in a one-to-one. Why would it make more sense if he was called spaghetti? I don't know. I have a concussion. Okay. All right. Well, 
thank you, bailiffs, for that. And uh, that's how that'll work. If you want to submit visual evidence, use the sound alerts. Yes, there's sound alerts here. If you're watching on desktop, I think if you like mouse over the the, visu the video window, there should be like a little picture of a ghost. And you can use sound alerts using bits, submit evidence that way, object to whatever's being said in the court that way. And, uh, oh, hey, uh, Bailiff, can you update the, uh, the sub goal, please, so that we can show that? It doesn't appear to be on the screen. What are you talking to? Because I'm off the grid. I'm talking to the Bailiff that's at the computer who can control what's going on in the stream. I was watching old, uh, Newgrounds videos. Okay, well, can you, uh, stop that and instead get the sub goal up on the screen? How do you know Raptor's a car? And it should be appearing shortly, any minute now. It'll be on the screen. <laughs> Judge, were you into the whole stick figure fad back in 2005? Uh, I played like Fancy Pants uh, platformer game. Okay. How we looking over there, Bailiff? Pretty good, I think. Here we go, here we go, found it. There it is, we got there, folks. If you notice in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, if we get 15 subscriptions, a mere 15 subs, we will head on down to the police department. Yes, round of applause. Whoa, there it is. Look at that. Major Chaos or Chows. Major Chows gifting a sub, starting off the night hot. Thank you so much, Major Chaos. Uh, if you'd like to submit written testimony, go ahead. Uh, if you want to wait until our first trial, you can also do that if you want to learn a little bit more about what the trial is before you submit testimony relevant to that trial. But as I was saying, if we get 15 subs tonight, or now only 14 uh, more subs, we'll head on down to the police department for some much needed firearm training. Yes, you will join the Everything Now Police Department for some much needed firearm training, and you will be put into a scenario where you'll have to decide who to shoot. It's very exciting, very much needed, and uh, something that we should all try to shoot for tonight. So let's get those 14 subs. In the meantime, though, we've got to figure out what's going on with this first case. I seem to have misplaced my docket, and so I'll need you, uh, the viewers at home, to help me remember what this first defendant stands accused of. So can you please, chat, tell me what this first defendant is accused of. Tell, tell me the crime. Cute in line. Um, being a hater, watching the stream without donating or subbing, that is a high crime. Um, raising the roof, breathing too hard. Let's get something that, things that are like actually crimes or like, you know, could could feasibly be a crime. Um, spanking a goose, dumping slop in a legal zone, eating pizza crust first, bringing poison food to the party. There we go. We're getting closer now. Uh, hailing a taxi and not getting in. <laughs> Stole a cactus. Double murder. Grand theft larceny. Uh, oh yeah. Wait, was that a first? They subscribed. Uh, yeah, major major chows. Um, we'll take that one. Um, poisoning food at a party. Yes. A high crime indeed. Poisoning food at a party. A party, a place where you're supposed to be able to trust everyone and have a good time. But when somebody puts a little something in the punch bowl and it turns into Jonestown, well, that's that's something all altogether undesirable. And so, a kid's birthday party, no less. Wow. Maybe that detail will be revealed during this trial. Uh, we'll find out. In the meantime, let's bring out the defendant. Please take your place at the podium and state your name for the record. Darshi blows. Darshi? Darshi. 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 Darshi blows. What is, what's the uh, etymology of your name, Darshi? Old Testament. Oh, it's a biblical name. Wow, okay, I guess I got to read up on my bible all yeah, right brush uh, up and thank you so much brando let us know if you'd like to submit written te written testimony for this uh particular case uh darshi do you understand the crimes for which you've been brought to trial yes and i'm offended okay 
Uh, well, I can understand that. It's it's certainly, uh, it would make me feel offended if, if someone accused me of poisoning people at a party. So maybe you can walk me through the events of the party and, and tell me where things sort of went wrong. Okay, I loaded up the fam into our Kia Sorento. And this includes all my nieces who I take care of. Scoot, Scout, Scar, Sky, Skeet. These are all your nieces? Yeah. I see. So you, why, why were you in charge of all of your nieces? <laughs> we come from a broken home, okay? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Darshi. I uh, come from a broken home, okay? Well, Darshi, we do have some visual evidence here, I think, which will hopefully tell us a little bit more about your family and, and the circumstances that led to you being at this party. Uh, are we ready to take a look at that, Bailiff? Let's have a look. Okay, so this appears to be some sort of reward or medal. Um, can you explain what it is that you did to earn this? Yeah, after my parents were murdered, uh, I was uh, struggling in school. Um, needless to say, regardless of people caring about my plight and whatnot, I suffered educationally, okay? So I made myself a gold freaking star and showed that to my second grade teacher, Mr. Coolian. And um, she said, that doesn't count because you made it and I didn't actually give it out. It's not legal. So I cut her with a box knife. Oh, okay. Well, um, when was this? This was when you were in second grade? Yeah. And did you end up serving any time for that? No, I said it was an accident. <laughs> I see. Okay, well, it doesn't <laughs> sound like that. Unfortunately, I assume the uh, statute of limitations on that crime has since expired. Uh, nevertheless, did that maybe leave uh, something of a chip on your shoulder, Darshi? Something that you didn't ever forget? Yeah, I had to scratch and claw my way all the way to the top. And not even at the top, you know? But I'm trying my gosh darndest, okay? And no Statue of Liberty is going to take that away from me and my nieces. Statue of Liberty? What, what do you mean by that? You just said the Statue of Liberty must be up in arms about this or something. No, no, sorry. The Statute of Limitations, it's how long... I don't care if the French gave it to us as a gift. I think she's a bitch. Oh. And she dresses like a hussy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Big pop for that. Uh, so, listen, Darshi, let's forget about that whole situation at school for a moment and get back to the party. You were loading up your family into your Kia Sorento on your way to a birthday party. When you got to the party, is there anything unusual, anything strange that uh, stuck out to you? Yeah, all the moms were like looking at me and laughing. Oh, uh, why do you think that might be? I don't know. I was wearing exactly this outfit. You were wearing, you were wearing that? Yeah. And do you have a sort of a, how would you describe your uh, aesthetic, your style? Fieri chic. Fieri chic, like the, like the celebrity chef Guy Fieri? Yeah, like Guy. You know that's actually pronounced Fietti? No way. Yeah, it's Italian, I think, Fietti. Wow, I'm from, I'm from Modesto, so that's how it just sounds with my accent. Got it. Okay, well, that, uh, not related, I just, you know, sometimes people... No, nah, it's interesting. Okay, well... Are you single? I am not single, I am unhappily married. Oh. Um, so, we do have a bit more visual evidence here, Darshi, uh, Darshi, and I think this piece of evidence is hopefully going to tell us a little bit more about the party itself. Let's have a look. Yeah, I shouldn't be the criminal up here. So, to me, this looks like a map of the state of California, but with the word Nebraska written inside of it. How, how is this related to the party? So, it's not my fault that my nieces are friends with a bunch of transplants from Nebraska. Um, but they come on by with their, their, their mailed steaks, and they just kind of shove it in our faces like they're better than us. You, I'm sorry, they're what states? They're mailed steaks. They're mailed steaks. The one thing I know about Nebraska is that you can like get steaks mailed to you from there. <laughs> and they're like really see. good. Okay, so this was- so Allegedly. This was like a catered themed party where Omaha everybody- steaks. Omaha steaks, I fight for them, says it in the chat, Omaha steaks. Omaha steaks, okay, got it. Okay, that's the one thing you know about Nebraska. Also, Alexander Pang's from there. Got it. Okay. And he has a new movie coming out. I saw that. That looks good. It I, looks I, all love right. a, I love a Giamatti joint. It looks good. Are you single? I'm not. I'm unhappily married. Gotcha. Um, so we do have another piece That's of... That's Alexander Payne's demo. 
What's that? Unhappily married people? Well, that's, that's so probably, true. That's probably why I like his movies so much. Darshi, we have another piece of visual evidence here that I'm hoping is going to get us closer to the bottom of what exactly went wrong at this party. It sounds like to me you were at some sort of uh, Nebraska-themed transplant birthday party where that was catered with Omaha steaks when something went awry. Uh, let's have a look at this visual evidence and see what that might have been. Oh my been. god. Oh my now, god. To me, this looks like a rendering of gay sex Mario. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's appropriate for a children's birthday party. Care to explain how that uh, sort of folds into this story? Okay, so, like, I guess the kids all just came from seeing the Super Mario Brothers movie in theaters. And, like. I haven't seen it. Is there a part where Mario has gay sex? No. I mean, like, I don't think so. I fell asleep. But okay, so there may be a part where Mario has gay sex. You just aren't totally sure. It's entirely possible. I, didn't, I haven't thought about it like that. But basically, my kids, all the kids were dressed up as their own, like, versions of Mario. So you had, like, a kid in a tanuki suit. That's Japanese for raccoon. Um, and also, like, there's the Mario that's, like, dressed as a cat from New Super Mario Brothers U. Um, and there's also, like, a Mario that, like, doesn't have a mustache, or, like, a Mario that doesn't Clean have... Clean shaven Mario. Clean shaven Mario, yeah. I see. So you're saying that the children were dressed as various types of Mario, a cat Mario, a raccoon Mario, a clean shaven Mario, and one of these children was dressed as gay sex Mario. Yeah, my freaking niece. One of your nieces. Which niece was it? Scar, Scoot, Skeet. It was Scar. Scar was dressed as gay sex Mario, yeah. and that, I'm sure, probably yeah, raised some eyebrows from some of the other Nebraska moms I don't know how they. birthday party. I don't know how they do it. The coastal elite, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're along, like, one of the Great Lakes, right? The coastal, wait, who? The Nebraska. Nebraska, no. Nebraska does not border. I don't know how the these Great landlocked Lakes. elites feel like they're so much better than everyone, but they're, they're trying to stop my Scar from being so imaginative. Hey, Judge, we've got some written testimony. Oh, wonderful. Okay, uh, we've got a bit of written testimony here, uh, Darshi, which I'm hoping is going to so sort of bring all these facts together. And we also have uh, a witness that's going to be called uh, Major Chaos. Thank you for the $5 donation. Let us know who you'd like to see on the witness stand. Whoa, and I fight for them. You're oh welcome God. also to call a witness to the stand. But first, Thank you so much for your support out there. I feel like single ants deserve better rights and support out there. So thank you. A noble cause indeed. Fighting for the rights of the long marginalized group, single aunts. I come from a broken home. Well, uh, we have some written testimony now, Darshi. We're gonna take a look at that and hopefully this will sort of point us in the right direction of how this poisoning at the birthday party happened. Let's have a look. Uh huh. Uh, Major Chaos says, I have seen those dog poo hot dogs. I swear it wasn't an actual hot dog. Please explain why. Okay. First of all, it's called adobo, and it's a way of cooking meats. Sure, it looks a little bit like a dog poop if you don't prepare it right or it isn't too saucy. But I'd like to chalk up this entire circus of a court case to Ray Schism. Thank you. <laughs> to, I'm sorry, who is who is that, Ray Schism? Well, I... I do know a race schism, but this is race, 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 racism. Racism. You think this is racism? And what race are you? I'm Filipino. Oh, okay. And race, you think race schism owns the pawn shop down the street? Ah, okay. That's, That's where I know him I know. from. Right. Got it. Okay. So I, I think I'm starting to piece together what happened here. You went to a birthday party full of conservative Nebraska moms who had catered the birthday with Omaha steaks. Yeah. And it I was to a point Mario... out, someone says beautiful race in the chat, and that's so true. Be speaking of, of Filipino people? Yeah. We are I, beautiful don't feel, I don't feel comfortable commenting on Go that. Go ahead. Say it verbatim. Filipino people are a beautiful race. Filipino people are a beautiful race. No clip more beautiful than any other race. Okay, clip that, but... Actually, that's kind of like an All Lives Matter kind of thing right there, so do clip that. Well, I think... I'm not going to continue on this line of reasoning. What I'd like to do is, is run uh, what I... How I understand the facts and you can tell me whether or not this rings true to you uh darshi okay. you went to a birthday party filled with conservative wrong. nebraska Stop. okay what happened where did i go wrong you missed chapter one you started at chapter five 
Right, you loaded your nieces into the Kia Sorento. Thank you so much. Uh, who is that? Popcorn Braden. Thank you for that. Let us know if you'd like to submit some written testimony. That's chapter two. Okay, what's chapter one? I come from a broken home. You're right. Uh, well, in just a moment, uh, the we're gonna don't get, work. We're gonna get back to. Uh, and someone is objecting to your coming from a broken home. Bullshit! And even if you haven't watched any of my vlogs or anything like that, you'll see that my home is completely broken. Okay, what's your YouTube channel where we can watch your vlogs? Single Ant Adventures. Single Ant Adventures. All right, go check that out on YouTube. In the meantime, I'm going to have to stop you right there, Darshi, because we do have a witness on the stand. Uh, witness, if you please uh, wouldn't mind stating your name for the record. Here we go! Oh, boy. It's -a me, Mario! And Mario, what is it that you are doing here today? What is your testimony? I'm looking down at my little Chiron there. It say I have a gay sex. Oh, you are gay sex, Mario. No, I'm a Mario. Well, what are you talking about, the gay sex? We actually, so one of our defendant, uh, Darshi, they have a niece named Scar, I think. Scar. Who, who dressed up as you at a birthday party. Huge fan. They love gay sex, Mario. Well, I love to have a gay sex, but the problem I have now is you calling me a gay sex, Mario. I have a fun, imaginative life outside the bedroom. Really? Okay, well, I guess... Yahoo! For the purpose of this <laughs> trial, we're focusing mainly on your... Identity as a as a gay guy. Do you say that when you're like? And I saw you address me like a gay sex Mario. I come to the stand, and you are calling me a gay sex Mario just cause I like I'm to not take calling it up you the that. ass. That's how that's how the defendant <laughs> called you. When he you're, said you're gay sex Mario. I don't know. When you're getting stuffed like a musket, do you say Yahoo? Okay, that that's inappropriate. Is it? I say here we go. There you go. Okay, you Yahoo! don't have, you don't have to answer that question. Ah! I go, wah! Okay, I feel like we're getting off track a little bit here, Gay Sex Mario. Now, can you please- Major Chaos is saying, this is epic, I agree. <laughs> okay. My niece please. say that all the time. Gay Sex Mario, can you, do you know the defendant? Are you familiar with this defendant? Let me take a closer look there. There she blows. He's yeah. been ages since I seen you. Yeah, it's been a minute. Oh, so you. you do know each other? Yeah, sure. Of course. How do you know each other? We hang out. Okay. Can you describe the nature of your relationship? How did you meet? Jamba Juice. You guys met at Jamba Juice? Yeah. No. Well, what do you mean when you say Jamba Juice? Then? We'll have a Jamba Juice. You'll have a Jamba Juice? Jamba well, how Juice. How did you meet? Woohoo! All right. Thank you, Gay Sex Mario. <laughs> I think we're good on you. That wasn't helpful at all. Uh... We have another uh, witness to bring in, don't we, Bailey? We do? Do we? I don't know. We got two donations. No way. One was from uh, I hope it's not Chaos one of those and one bitch was from parents Fight for Them. That put me on trial. Anyway, and we may have another piece of written testimony. And we got we to gotta move this trial along, okay? So, Darshi, I'm going to give uh, an opportunity to, to some of our jurors to ask you questions directly. Uh, if we have any other evidence, we'll take a look at that. And then we got to bring this to a vote. So, sure thing. Uh, jurors in the chat, if you have any questions you'd like to ask Darshi directly, go ahead and write those in the chat now. And Darshi, I'll give you the opportunity to answer those directly. Thank you, Judge. Also, just as a precursor, just so everyone has a little bit of context, I come from a broken home. Yeah, we got that. You mentioned that quite a bit. My few bed times. that all my nieces sleep in with me and has two legs. I'll let you figure out which corners have the legs. <laughs> go ahead and answer the question, Darshi. It's top left and bottom right. Um, what's in the cup? Fago Moon Mist. Um, Darshi, do you do your own hair? Yes, I do. And I do all my niece's hairs. Where were you? February 31st, 1992. I was two years old. Um, uh, how do I be as cool as you? Um, have five kick-ass nieces, uh, who drive you to do the best that you can be as a single gal out on the road. My kid died from the poisoning. How are you not in prison? It's called adobo. Yes, coagulated cow blood is maybe involved, but that is not part of, it's not, a, it's not poisoning. I cooked it correctly. All right. All right, I'm gonna have to cut you off uh, there, Darshi, for a moment. We have some more visual evidence here. Uh, hopefully this piece of visual evidence will be 
get us sort of back on track here. I feel like we kind of lost the plot a little bit there with Gay Sex Mario, and this piece of visual evidence, I'm sure, uh, will solidify this case and get our jurors to make the right decision. This is going to prove me an innocent woman. Yes, that's the Fibonacci sequence on a bear. This looks like a big fat bear with the Fibonacci sequence. And can you please, uh, for us, Darshi, explain how this relates to the party or the poisoning? Yeah. So, basically, like, you know, the people from Nebraska, they're like the main girls at the school. And basically, everything that they say out of their stupid... Thank you. I didn't even say what I was going to say yet, but thank you. But you're going to do that again once you hear what I have to say. Everything that they say out of their stupid mouths from the middle of the country, it's basically bear shit. It comes out of a bear's asshole. It's no more important than the shit that comes out of a bear's asshole snaking out and pinched off by the asshole itself. Okay, well, thank you for that graphic description, uh, Darshi. We do have one further witness to take the stand right now, and then we're going to bring this to a vote for our jurors. So, Go witness. suck off some corn stalks, bitches. Okay. You know that Nebraska is mostly corn? Thank you for that. Um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily relevant, but now we have to go to our... Uh, witness on the stand. Witness, if you wouldn't mind, please state your name for the record. Wah! Okay, I'm sorry. How do you spell oh that? Oh my god, this fucking guy. W-A-L-U-I-G-I. -I. Wa uh, Waluigi? Wah! Okay, I, I see the Chiron there says straight sex Waluigi. I do take offense to that for the record. Well, I'm sorry. Do you not have straight sex? Well, I mean, I just don't understand why that is the main means of identifying me as a human being. I don't know I, either. I'm a I... nuanced, full individual. I have a whole life outside, you know, what I do. Do you have do hobbies? Do you kids. want to describe some of your hobbies? I collect uh, miniature uh, little, you know, little towns, those little Christmas towns that they have at Hallmark. Yes. You know, I, okay. I have like a whole, my basement is full of Those are so cute. Town. Yeah. And you do that more than have sex? It's very meditative. Okay, uh, that checks out. It seems like you do that a lot more than have sex. Why uh, would you say Mr. that? What well, are you, wait, no, hold on. What the fuck are you talking about? You're the one who says that your identity should be more associated with your Christmas villages than with your straight sex. I'm no, just, I'm just saying that no one should be identified principally by their sexual proclivities. I just feel like, you know, nobody is really, even if someone is having sex constantly, I feel like most of the time they have a rich inner life they, they needn't be identified solely on the basis of how they get off. Yeah, but you said the word constantly, so that implies that they're like never not having sex. So well, how I mean, but I even know? when they're having sex, they have a sort of internal cognition that is, I think, sometimes divorced from the act of lovemaking. I would just say that, right? Can we get, yes. Thank you, thank you. Oh my God. Don't clap for that, don't clap for that. Uh, all right, uh, straight sex Waluigi, can you please tell us what you're doing here? Wow! All right, that's enough of that. Thank See you. See you, Juice. Uh, Bailiff, if we could please prepare a poll now to decide whether or not the defendant, Darshi Blows, uh, is guilty or innocent of the crime of poisoning a children's birthday party. Darshi, I'm gonna, while we prepare this poll, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to make your closing remarks. Cover broke up. I'm sorry, what? I come from a broken home. What are you saying? I come from a broken home. My fireplace spews out ice cubes like it was a refrigerator. My stairs are slanted. There's no good way to get a grip on them. My closet? It's not even, it's not even, it's not even a closet. It's, it's just a door and then it's just a wall. Can't even fit. Well, I have a door there. That's what I'm saying. Tell that to the guy who made it in 1972. Do you live like in an apartment? Townhouse. I see. Are, is it one of those ones where it's like a bunch of them all in a row like that? Yes. Have you looked in any of the other units to see if they also have this like weird closet wall situation? I go door to door every month and make sure that no one else's apartment. You know, I just kind of see like, is your, does yours, when you plug in something to this, does it open your garage door? You do this every month? Yes. All right, I've seen enough. Let's close the poll. There's no one else like me. There she blows. For the charge of poisoning a children's birthday, the jury finds you guilty. Okay. 
Fair enough. I will just say though, on paper, as as a, as, a, as a Filipino woman who brought a chicken adobo to a kid's birthday party, and some white bitch from Nebraska who fucking cow, reverse cowgirl rides a, a stalk of corn every goddamn night. Um, that's this is racism. I'm just gonna say it flat out. Well, you'll have to take it up with the prison guards, uh, or well, I guess we'll have to see if you're going to prison. Actually, Darshi, because you've been found guilty, we'll now give it to our chat to decide what the punishment will be. Uh, jurors in the chat, what is the punishment for poisoning a children's birthday party? Uh, we've got some suggestions here: blowing us balloon animals for life, uh, a stalk of corn. Okay, that's not the punishment. Uh, bro home broken again, re-breaking the electric chair. <laughs> Uh, firing squad, <laughs> no more water slides, new home, move to Nebraska. I like that. That because of uh, your constant critique of Nebraska, it seems that there'd be no punishment worse for you in particular, uh, Darshi Blows, than to send you to where you hate the most, and that, of course, is Nebraska. So your punishment now is relocation to Nebraska. Oh! That's so lame. Do I have to live in Lincoln? Uh, I I don't know. It's all just Nebraska to me. Oh. Not a major city. What about my nieces? Your nieces, they can, I guess, I mean, like, if you're their primary caregiver, they should probably go with you. Oh. Fine. I'll go move to Lincoln, Nebraska with my five nieces. And you know what? Name them again. Sky, Scar, Sky, Scoot, Ski. Great. All right. Thank you, Darshi. Thanks for joining us. And uh, please get on the next bus to Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, my God. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, folks, it always pains me to see a guilty verdict, but it means that the system works. Another criminal taken off the streets and sent to some other city where they'll have to deal with them. That's the system, and it works great. If you're just joining us, my name, of course, is Judge Learned Hand. And if you're here watching, that means you're part of our jury tonight, where you'll be deciding whether or not these alleged criminals are guilty or innocent of the crimes for which they stand accused. Now, part of these trials is asking them questions to get to the bottom of the case, but sometimes questions just isn't enough. And we'll have to take a look at some evidence to really come to a verdict. So there are a few different ways you can submit evidence during tonight's proceedings. You can join the Everything Now Show Discord, which if you haven't, what the fuck are you doing? Join the Discord, submit some images. We might use them in tonight's trial. We'll put them up on the screen right there and we'll use that as evidence during the trial. Uh, for $5, you'll see down here in the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the screen, you can call a witness to the stand. Yes, we've already had two wonderful witnesses who had such valuable testimony. Of course, I'm talking about gay sex Mario and straight sex Waluigi, two valuable witnesses who gave very important testimony that may have pushed the tide uh, on that last case. Of course, you can bring anybody to the witness stand. Just donate $5, tell us who you want to talk to, and we will put them on the stand for some interrogation. You can also submit written testimony by subscribing to the show. Yes, subscribe to the show, write what you want to put as uh, written testimony, and we'll display it on the stream uh, and have the defendant answer to that testimony. And of course, if we get only 12 more subscriptions, we've already got three, let's get 12 more. We'll head on down to the police station for some firearm training where you, the viewer at home, will get to shoot people. So uh, that's how it works, folks. Uh, if you want to trigger uh, the visual evidence on the screen. Use the sound alerts. You'll figure out how that works. Ask somebody else in the chat. Okay, uh, next thing we need to do is figure out what this next defendant stands accused of. So if you wouldn't mind, viewers, uh, let me know. I've, I've misplaced my docket. What crime did this next defendant uh, allegedly commit? Something that is illegal, uh, but nothing like too, you know, violent or like a sex crime let's keep it you know why are you scared i am scared i'll admit it me too uh organizing a baby fight club um boinking a teletubby okay sex crime someone just wrote sex crime <laughs> uh not washing hands after taking a shit robbed a child's lemonade stand at gunpoint uh laid a finger on my butterfinger low treason uh 
Sleeping, ah, okay, yes. We'll take that from Classy Clam Chowder. Falling asleep while uh, using a automated driving system. The Tesla's, yes, Tesla's self-driving feature allows drivers to take their hands off the wheel and let the car do the driving. But of course, it's required that you stay alert in case it decides to do what Tesla's uh, are, at the end of the day, desperately want to do, which is murder pedestrians. So it requires that a driver stay alert and have their hands kind of just like ready to steer the uh, car away from killing a pedestrian, which the car is programmed to desire to do. So uh, this next defendant fell asleep in their, te in their Tesla while it was in self-driving mode and presumably uh, injuries occurred as a result. We're gonna bring that defendant out now and hear what they have to say. Defendant, please take your place at the podium and if you wouldn't mind, uh, state your name for the record. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm Danny Camelot. Danny Camelot. And is that, um, is that your real name or do you like work at, uh, like, uh, maybe no, that, times that's, or that's something? my real name. Yeah. I was ah. born at Camelot. I'm actually, uh, sorry. I'm, uh, are you uh, intoxicated right now? Mr. No, Camelot? no, no. I have gout. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. It runs in my family. We eat a lot of cheese. I uh, see. You have hereditary gout. Yeah. But yo, well, yeah, well, you know, I don't think it's hereditary, but you know, that's that. And what do you mean it runs in your family? Well, it's just kind of a royal thing. I'm next in line um, in the throne. The throne? Yeah. Oh, royalty. I didn't yeah. realize. Uh, where, where is this monarchy? Um, up in uh, Camelot City. Ah, I see. Another jurisdiction. A monarchy jurisdiction. Yeah, it's a little... If you go... Um, you know what? It's kind of hard to describe where it is, but um, we got a lot of land, and there's a lot of good folks up there, and it's kind of a nice, tight-knit community, and... Um, uh, you know, we like to uh, have a good time and the stakes are high. I see. Well, it seems that a mistake was made earlier, uh, Mr. Camelot. So, so do I understand correctly? Your, your father is the king or your mother is the queen? What is yeah, the yeah, my dad? Here? My dad's the king, um, King Camelot. And then I'm his son. These are tight. Um, and I'm the, I'm next in line for the throne. What is that around your wrist there, Danny? These, these are shackles. Some big guy uh, put them on me. I, is, this not, is that not protocol? Oh, well, I suppose if you were arrested at the scene, uh, those are probably to keep you from that, getting That, by the way, behind. was a huge misunderstanding. Yeah, I, I'd actually love to get because to the bottom of I that. don't even drive a car. I drive a horse. Like You drive a horse? Yeah, I've got um, um, <laughs> Net, Net Nelson and Brett, those are my horses. And <laughs> I don't even know what a car looks like, to be honest with you, dude. You don't know what a car looks like. I find that hard to believe, Danny. Well, look, I'm in Camelot City like 24 seven and like, we don't have cars there. And I don't know what this, I don't know what happened, this whole mix up, like with all the, with the, what is that called? A, uh, a Tila? It's a Tesla, it's an electronic uh, vehicle. Uh-huh, and how does that work? Uh, I'm not sure about the engineering behind it. It was made by some eccentric pervert who uh, designed it, I guess, as sort of like a challenge to God. Um, okay. But what I do know is that it's able to drive itself, not unlike a horse. Okay. And so what? I, so maybe what I'm getting at here is, is you maybe perhaps mistook in a in a drunken sort of festivity. Well, I, I, I can't say for sure that it didn't happen because you know at the end of the day I don't know what a car looks like or a Tila uh, looks like. So if it looks like a horse, well they've sort of got four legs that um, are round. Okay. Um, That's and ears. That's not what a horse looks like. What, what? Horses are like big and strong and like, and they're brown or they're black or they're white and they like are, got muscles and, and they're like, they make, <laughs> you know? So like, I don't know if that's the same thing. Well, let's let's sort of go back to the time of the crime. The incident and occurred. And Brad and Nelson, by the way, my horses, they're fucking stallions, man. I mean, they can take you through hell and back, you know? I really love my horses. I've actually known them since they were born. Yeah, it really, it sounds like you have a deep connection with your horses. Yeah, um, so, I would do anything for my fucking horses. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Um, uh, 
maybe you could tell me a little bit more about the nature of your relationship with your horses. We're fucking tied to them at birth. It's like a fucking ritual thing we do. And the umbilical cord that my father cut with his fucking sword from my his father, and they slice that umbilical cord of the of the of the horse. And I'm gonna stop you for just one moment, uh, Danny. We do have a direct question from one of our jurors. They they want to sort of get to the bottom of this. A few a few, a few of our jurors seem to be speculating here that you may be having I don't know. some sort of intimate relationship abide, with abide these Abide by the Camelot animals. city code and bestiality is a sin and and they would have my head for that. So absolutely not. Just because so you, you can don't. love and admire an animal and its physique and its strength doesn't mean you do stuff with it. But anyone, totally. all, any and all are welcome to come to Camelot City. We've got good food. We eat chicken and turkey and cheese and lots of good and good grouse. And um, and um, you could pet the horses. You could ride the horses. Um, yeah. Dear Lord, you dropped your lunch. Oh, thank you so much, my liege. What is? Um, that's that's um, Kenny. He he comes kind of with me everywhere. He's like a jester, but he's also a friend. It's one of those weird relationships where it's like, uh, you love him, but you you know it's like he's annoying, that kind of thing. Yeah, I have that kind of relationship with my bailiff. Okay. That's a giant piece of cheese. Yeah, this is this has gone bad. This is not working out for me. Thank you, Kenny. Probably doesn't help the gout. No. Uh, all right, Danny. Uh, I want to take us back to the the day of the crime and and maybe figure out what happened here. Maybe it was a case of mistaken identity. It, it, the the complaint was filed about a week ago. What was happening in Camelot City a week ago? Um. Well. Um. I think. Craig threw a party. Um, Craig, now down. who's that? He's kind of like one of the more drunk nights. Um, and I think he broke up with his girlfriend, Tessa. And they, yeah, all the boys, the, the, the knights in shining armor, we went out for Craig. And um, But like I said, dude, it's just Camelot City. Like there's literally walls around it that are like 30 feet high. So we're just partying in Camelot City. I see. Well, maybe. What, what did you say your drunk friend's name was? Uh, Craig. Craig. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we'll get Craig on the witness stand if someone donates $5. But uh, we do have a piece of visual evidence now, Danny, that we're going to take a look at. And maybe this is something from Craig's party that might help uh, uh, explain uh, how things got confused and someone might have thought that you were driving the Tesla. Yeah. Uh, Bailiff, are we ready to show that piece of evidence? Uh, two seconds. All right, we're going to have a look at that in just a moment uh -huh. here. Let's have a look. Mm. Now, this looks like maybe a Rotten Tomato or Prime Video um, Highlander, but it's also... Yeah, the that Spanish looks like Spanish version of uh, Escape from New York. It could be a relative of mine if I'm looking at that correctly. <laughs> Does that look like someone from your family? That's definitely a Camelot. Yeah. That's who who is that? That could be Mike Camelot. <laughs> Mike Camelot. You want to see that again? Yeah, hold on. And yeah. take a couple. Can you steps. get that closer? That's about as close as we can get. Are you sure? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely Mike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're not gonna be able to hear you. You gotta. <laughs> that's definitely Mike Camelot. Great. Oh God, you're so huge. All right. Well, <laughs> and who is he to you, Mike Camelot? He. Uh, Presumably a family member. They you share the same I'm, last name. Yeah, he. He's in the. He. We've got a huge family. Got it, yeah, yeah, I guess the whole town's named after you. Right. I see. Okay, well, we've got another piece of visual evidence here. So what was Mike Camelot think, at the I think, party? I think he's one of my dad's brothers. I see. An uncle, one might say. My dad's got like 18 brothers. I see. And those would be your uncles. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so uh, are you on good terms with your uncle, Mike? Or are uh, things perhaps um, a little rocky? You know, he um, he's doing his best, and I can't fault him, but yeah. Would he perhaps be harboring any resentments for you for anything? A reason perhaps to frame you for a crime? Um, I mean, other than the fact that I slept with his daughter, I can't think of anything else. Okay, well, that might have something to do with it. We do have another piece of visual evidence here. Um, maybe this will have something to do with your relationship with your uncle, something that will jog your memory about the 
the sort of contentious relationship you have with your uh, Uncle Mike. Uh-huh. Uh, Bailiff, are we ready to take a look at that? Yeah. All right, let's have a look it's okay. here. okay. It's Cousins and Camelot, by the way. That's okay. That's a dog looking at a... That's, look, that's looking like a dog looking at a treat. Like, he's very excited to catch a treat. Yeah. Um, and is this uh, your uncle's dog? Yeah, um, that actually... That is definitely Uncle Mike's dog. Um who is actually almost the size of a horse. It's like a big, uh, he, basically, he never got good with the horses, Uncle Mike, and so he does the he does dogs. He raises dogs uh -huh. to like be yeah, ready? Yeah, not he doesn't do them, but he, you know, he raises them, and I am just. That cheese probably hitting yeah. you hard, huh? Yeah. Do you need to take a moment? No. Okay. This is my life. I'm, I'm nauseous 90% of the time. You know, that's what it is being a Camelot. Yeah, I guess a lot of the incest is probably fucking up Horrible. your whole genetic yeah. thing. You should see the rest of the lot. They just got weird eyes and arms and stuff. You guys, yeah, a lot of, a lot of genetic mutations when the family's kind of all doing each other, huh? Yeah. All right, yeah. well, we've got another piece Have of... Have you ever seen The Hills Have Eyes? Yeah, yeah. Is it... <laughs> that would be a good comparison. Got it. Okay. Family. Starting to make sense why you guys are sort of walled off from the rest of society now. Right, like I said, there's a 30-foot wall. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a keep you out from us kind right. of situation. This is why I'm saying I've never seen a Tila. Got it. Okay. Well, uh, and it is a Tesla, but I guess that's becoming less and less important, uh, Danny. We've got another piece of visual evidence here. Uh, let's have a look at that. Now, it is the piece of visual wow. evidence from the previous trial that we already saw. Um, but um, how does it? Oh, really? Yep, we did already see yeah. the Fibonacci bear. Wow. How does it? How does it relate to your case, though? Yeah, I mean, one, um, we eat bear, and two, we pray to the Lord. So I kind of think that um, someone in my community might have taken that photograph in the jungle forest of Camelot. I see. Okay. Well, we've got got another piece of visual evidence uh -huh. here which will be a new piece of evidence okay. i'm sure this one's different um this one is different uh, and, and i'm uh, starting to piece together how this ca case may have unfolded but uh let's take a look at this piece of evidence here and, and see okay and this to me this to me is looking very similar to that last piece of evidence no it's photoshopped that well that <laughs> one was uh the bear's the bear's ass was slightly larger. Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. I forgot to change it. Here, ch uh, do the flag again. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm changing it. Once got it. Oh, okay. We're, I'm mistake. sorry. That was a mistake. We're going to get the it's real. Right now. All right. Now we're going to have a look at the real new piece of evidence. Let's okay. have a look. Uh, okay. Now that's, that's going to be, uh, that is a different bear, actually. That's the, that, the first bear was a brown bear. And then they photoshopped the brown bear in the second photograph to have a larger ass. And then the third bear is a black bear. I, I, I promise. It does seem like it's getting See, bigger. See, it's getting bigger. I told you. And this is a video, I guess, maybe. Yeah. I okay. actually, yeah. I've, this I've, is I've, an AVI file. All right. I grew up with bears, too. Wow, a lot of animals uh, up in Camelot City. Well, we don't have much other entertainment. And there's no electricity, just candles and, um, and um, you know. There's candles, Probably there's be... bears, there's women, there's bo there's men, um, and there's horses, and the horses are very, very strong. Yes, you <laughs> you mentioned that. The bears are strong too. All right, Danny, I, I've got a, a theory about what may have transpired here, and and you can tell me yeah. whether or not you think that this you, you tell might me, be Judge. realistic. Now, I don't want to put a defense together for you, but from what I'm hearing, uh, you've got uh, something of a contentious relationship with your Uncle Mike, whose daughter you slept with, mm -hmm. uh, which may have rubbed him the wrong way. It's possible. It's got me thinking that perhaps out of anger and spite for your actions, your uncle uh, framed you and blamed an incident wherein a, a driver was driving a falling asleep at the wheel of a tesla and he blamed you for that crime called it in and, and that's what ended you up here in court i mean my uncle mike can't even like read or write <laughs> i just can't even see how he could possibly have uh, have been smart enough to frame me for a crime i i you know he's bad at me he's he's perhaps uh, you know but uh, just the whole thing with the car of, of the of the electricity and and, 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 and the car crash? I don't even know what a car looks like. Uncle Mike probably doesn't even know what, what you know, McDonald's looks like. And the only reason I know what McDonald's looks like is because, because Craig showed me a picture. 
All right, well, I tried to give you an out, Danny, but if you don't want to take the lifeline, I can't force you to. I am going to give you an opportunity. I'm confident that the, uh, that the jury will, 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 will rule me innocent. I'm, well, I'm very confident. Well, speaking of the jurors, I am going to give them an opportunity to ask you some questions directly now, uh, Mr. Camelot. So in a moment, uh, jurors, if you, yes, uh, Naked Comedy, uh, Please, you can go ahead and ask questions to Danny now. Uh, Danny, I'm going to let you answer these questions directly. They're going to appear right over there in the okay. jury box. Mm -hmm. Just read them, read the question, and, and answer them if you would. Are you from Alabama? Um, I'm not from Alabama. I'm from Camelot City. Danny, did you fuck your horses? We've, we've covered this, folks. What's the best part of Camelot City? That's a great question. Um, there's a small whore village in the <laughs> east corner, and they're friendly, they're lovely, it's inexpensive, and it's just good conversation. Um, are you guilty of falling asleep on, oh, that's too, did you do it? No. What's the most night-like thing you're known for? Um, I'm known for riding my horses faster than anyone else on the property. Coke or Pepsi? Diet Coke. Danny, have you fantasized if, come on, guys. Um, not a question, but down with the monarchy. Well, that won't fly in my city. What were your horses' names again? They were Brett and Nelson, and they are beasts of another caliber. They're horses of a different color. Uh, are Camelot blacksmiths hot? Well, um, James is. He's very strong, but uh, Ben, he just is throwing himself away to waste. Um, if you fuck your cousin, why not horses too? Again, think about the logistics. I would have to have st I have to be on a six foot ladder to even get access to the. I don't even want to go down that road because uh, I can't even do that. Did gay sex Mario put those? Ma 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 Who's gay sex Mario? All right, I think uh, we've answered, asked, and answered uh, a satisfying uh, amount of questions. And I didn't so do it. I didn't do it. Well, we are going to give you now an opportunity to make your closing remarks as our jurors in the chat uh, make their final votes. Okay. Look, um, I'm I'm an innocent guy. I'm next in line of the throne. I'm honestly scared. I'm 42. My my dad dies. <laughs> I'm fucking. I'm just look. I'm just. I'm doing the best You're I can. You're 42. All this, I'm 42. You look great. Thank you so much. Um, the gout, it, really. I would have thought with all the incest and stuff, like you your we have like natural terrible. soil and stuff. Um, and for the skin, but look, I'm just, I'm vulnerable. I'm scared to take over the throne. I'm just doing my best to learn how to ride horses and like, you know, be a good example for like the other knights and stuff. And you guys uh, clearly think I did it based on the votes that are coming in, but please, like, I just wanted to be there for my Camelot city and like, and like all the other, the citizens who need me, like, the maidens and the and the and the farmers. I've heard enough. <laughs> Close the poll. Danny Camelot, the jurors have voted and found you guilty of the uh, crime of driving a Tesla while you were asleep. The villagers will burn down the prison and steal me and take me back to the throne. You fools. You fools. Guilty! Uh, hey. The only thing we have left to do now, Mr. Camelot, is determine your punishment. So, Chad, if you wouldn't mind, please give me some suggestions for a fitting punishment for this prince. Uh, let let me know. Death by cheese. Okay. Boy, it does. It seems like it seems like horrible. it's going that, that way is already. Is fuck him. That sounds horrible. Bear orgy. Moat milk latte. No horses for a week. I can't survive. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well. Uh, yeah, no horse. Yeah, a lot of people are saying no horse. No, it does don't seem... take the horses away. You can't take the horses away. It is so decided, Danny no. Camelot. You will have to uh. live the rest of your life without horses. Brett Nelson! Farewell. Farewell. No! Ugh. I thought that went well. I thought that went I thought that went about as smoothly as it could have gone. You know, sometimes with these Nepo babies and especially those born into royalty, they can have uh, you know, uh, a little sass when it comes to taking the defendant's stand, but you know, at the end of the day, no one's going to stop justice. The long of justice. So, folks, if you're just joining us, my name of course is Learned Hand and tonight you, the viewers at home, will be our jury. Yes, you'll help us decide whether or not these 
Alleged criminals are guilty of their crimes by asking questions, but also by submitting evidence in a variety of ways. You can submit images that we'll display here on our television by joining the Discord. If you haven't already, what are you doing? It's free. Join the Everything Now Show Discord. There's a link in the chat. Submit an image. You might see yours on the screen. For $5, you can call a witness to the witness stand. We've had gay sex Mario and straight sex Waluigi on the stand. I'd love to have like a normal guy uh, take the witness stand and so maybe gay give us... normal now, huh? Mm, interesting. Maybe I was talking about straight sex Waluigi. Hmm? We didn't know what you were talking about. Listen, for $5, you can put anybody on the witness stand, fictional character, celebrity, or someone who's related to the trial. I know it sounds crazy, but I'd love to see it. Uh, for a subscription, which we've already had three of, uh, you can submit written testimony. Here's some written testimony from one of our previous trials. Major Cheese said, I've seen those dog poo hot dogs. I swear it wasn't an actual hot dog. Please explain why. If you'd like to submit written testimony just like that or something else, subscribe, write your message in the chat, and we'll display it during the trial. And of course, we're only now 12 subscriptions away from hitting our goal of visiting the firing range where you, the viewer at home, will get to shoot somebody. So. Get us those 12 subscriptions. We only need 12 more. Let's get them in, folks. Uh, and we'll head on down to the firing range for some much needed practice. But the next order of business, of course, is to figure out what this next defendant stands accused of. So if you wouldn't mind, can we shoot you, is asking one of our jurors. And you'll have to find out by getting us 12 more subscriptions. What is this next crime? What What is this next defendant accused of? Peeing in the shower, burning down the house, too many underwear, <laughs> hijacking a helicopter on PCP, <laughs> going sicko mode, shooting a judge, having no riz, hugging everyone, um, pooping on clean laundry, too many underwear, someone is saying again, <laughs> uh, not clearly labeling wa sparkling water, doing coke in the White House bathroom, uh, no shirt on in a restaurant, farting on an airplane, doing an upper decker in a master bedroom, um, running a red light, headbutting the pilot, touring the Titanic, took over a grocery store intercom. I'm gonna take that one, yes. Now, obviously, the grocery store inter intercom is a sacred tool used only to tell the employees whether there's a cleanup on a specific aisle or if it's time to wash your hands. Or but, if there's a lost kid. Or if there's a kid who's missing. But sometimes a prankster will take over the intercom and use it in an inappropriate way. Frankly, a criminal way, yes? Say the wrong thing on a grocery store intercom and it can cause a panic that becomes dangerous. And that's why in this jurisdiction, Saying something on a grocery store intercom without appropriate clearance is a high crime. This next defendant stands accused of just such a crime. Let's go ahead and meet them now. Defendant, please state your name for the record. Um, it's me, Sassy McBride. And Sassy, do you understand the nature of the crimes for which you stand accused? I mean, I, I understand like what an intercom works and I understand like grocery store and I understand like that I'm in a room, but I like don't understand that I'd be punished in any way, any time. I see. Well, maybe let's take it back to the day of the incident. I assume that you frequent grocery stores, right? Do you buy your own groceries or do you have a service for that? I definitely have to be in the grocery store sometimes to do some of the things that I want to get what I want and what I need in my life. Got it. Well, that's very relatable, Sassy. What is it that you buy from the grocery store when you when you go there? Pretty much just like a lot of art supplies. Yeah, my grocery store is sort of a catch-all. It has like a lot of art supplies and like I'm an artist, so I like need my art supplies. Oh, interesting. Is it like a Target or a Walmart that has a grocery store, but also sort of like a department store section? Yeah, it's more like a Safeway, but like I get what I need. What, what sort of art do you do, Sassy? I'm a boardwalk caricature artist. Oh, wow, that's fun. That seemed to me like sort of like a dying profession. I'm. Uh, it's cool that you still are holding the mantle there. I don't know why you would bring that up. That obviously I'm sorry. That obviously depresses the shit out of me. 
Well, I apologize for that. Uh, how is business, Sassy? It's been a little difficult. It's been somewhat difficult. Uh, Sassy, I, you know, maybe this is off base, but if you had to do a caricature of someone like me who looks totally normal and has no distinct features, what might you draw to make me a caricature? Well, so the problem is it's pretty much this. Okay. That... That is kind of what I see when I look in the mirror, to be totally honest. Yeah, I would say that this is your whole thing. Just kind of like head, some arms, some legs, torso. This is like, this is like so you, you know? I guess, I feel like I have a little bit more, you know, charisma or, or unique features than that. Judge, did she snap a picture when you wasn't looking? No, that's not a photograph. That's clearly something she drew in like 30 seconds. Uh, this took me a really long time. I saw you do it. It didn't take you very long at all. Okay, now you're trying to And I'm just relative experience, Judge. All right, listen. Uh, yeah. Sassy, you, you went to this Safeway store to buy your groceries, which you allege consists primarily of art supplies. Yeah, markers. You were, you were going to buy markers so that you could do your caricature work on the boardwalk. Yeah. Uh, when you arrived in the grocery store, did you hear anything or notice anything unusual in the store? Yeah, I noticed that nobody was talking. In the, nobody was talking in the whole store or over the intercom? Yeah, nobody was talking on in the intercom, and I was Boring. like, solved that problem right away. I oh, don't need okay. To listen to She's So High by Tall Bachman again. So you decided that you would take matters into your own hands. How, how was it that you found the intercom and accessed it? Typically, it's locked behind some sort of password. Well, I guess, I guess there's sort of a little more to it than that which is that some of the grocery store employees were like, you have to pay for what you're buying. And I was like, oh, I don't have any money because business is, what'd you say, famously bad? Well, I just said that it seemed like there were fewer and fewer caricature artists. Like I, it used to be something that you would walk yeah. down like Hollywood Boulevard and you'd see like a dozen of them. And now I feel like I don't see them that much. Yeah, what do you see on Hollywood Boulevard now, Judge? Uh, I guess just there? like weird, like superhero people dressed up, and like a lot of people make trying to do like man on the street TikTok videos where they're like harassing strangers. Hmm. Well, Have you thing, tried that? Well, that's kind of what I've been accused of. Harassing really, strangers? Yeah, I'm doing my art. I'm, I'm doing my art, and I went to a prestigious college. Where did you go? Uh, senior tech Saturdays at the Apple store. <laughs> senior that's that's the school you went to was senior tech Saturdays at the Apple store. It's prestigious. It's worth like billions of dollars. The Apple, the Apple, the company is. Yeah, and all the other students are very old. Did you get some sort of certification at the end of that class? <laughs> yeah, they told me. They told me it was over. <laughs> I, I don't mean I don't mean certification that the class had concluded. I mean certification that you had completed the course and and were therefore you know had acquired new skills that you could then you know use to you know pursue a career or something like that. Yeah, you know how they are. They just sort of say go and get. Anyway, they shoo you out of the store. Yeah, can I go back and talk about my thing? Yes, sorry, we got cool. sidetracked there. So you were explaining how you were able to get access to the grocery store intercom system. Yeah, so I was like, I can't pay you uh, in money. I'm going to draw pictures of all of you. I'm going to do my art for you. Ah, my so a college. barter system of sorts. Yeah, and basically I, um, they didn't like what they saw. Oh, well, do you have your illustrations of the of the people? Or, or perhaps we even have some visual evidence that might help clarify that. But if you've got some of it here, I'd love to see it. Yeah, this is the store manager. Oh, wait, let me zoom in. Yeah. Okay, and to me, that looks like it's just sort of a circle. <laughs> yeah, that's because I think this guy didn't have a lot going on. Got it, so to you, he just sort of looked like a blank circle. Yeah, he's like, he totally sucks. Um, and I guess... I guess people understand that they they think they're gonna find you're gonna find something about them that's like so them, like if they have a nose. Yeah, you're I gonna guess make when a I... really big deal of that nose. But in this case, it's sort of like the absence of like where a guy would be. I see. So you, rather than sort of focusing in on the characteristics that make someone unique, 
you focus on the characteristics that make somebody sort of like boring and not having a personality and, and accentuate that in your illustrations. Yeah, like I'm a unique person. My name's Sassy. Right, that is pretty unique. And I also want to just say we are going to bring a, uh, a witness to the stand. Thank you, uh, Mr. Finger Guns. Uh, for calling that witness. So we're going to bring someone to the stand in just a moment. But uh, Sassy, I, I want to get back to the story here. So you offered as sort of a bartering system rather than paying for your groceries to illustrate the staff there. And how did that lead to you getting access to the intercom system? Well, I basically did these drawings and I showed them all at the same time and they started screaming and chasing me and the only place I had to go was the room that had the intercom system. So I was basically like begging for my life. Um, to have somebody come rescue me. What, what was it that caused the situation to escalate to the point where you were fearing for your life from these grocery store employees? I guess here's the thing. I guess these people are like right on the edge um, in terms of like having one person suggest that they're like pretty boring and or they're like the most replaceable people on earth. I guess people have been doing that for some time with a grocery store clerk, so... Um, so they were ready to snap, and this was sort of the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, I think I think also I did say over and over again, you are nothing. Got you it. You okay. are no one. Um, and so they chased you into the room with the intercom, and how was it that you were able to gain access to this system itself? Because typically those are password protected. Did you figure out the password somehow? Yeah, the password was password because, again, these are boring people. Got it. Okay. That is, I mean, I guess it's not the fucking Fort Knox here. We're dealing with a Safeway uh, intercom system. Password makes sense. Well, uh, Sassy, we've got someone on the witness stand right here. So, uh, Bailiff, do we have the microphone ready for this witness? Yeah, we do. Okay, great. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, hear what this wit witness has to say about the situation. If you wouldn't mind, witness, please state your name for the record. Yeah, see, I'm the Green Hornet, out here on the, uh, on the boardwalk. I see, okay. Uh, Go off, King! M Mr. Green Hornet, uh, nah. were, were you at the, and can you scooch just a little bit to the side so you're not being cropped out quite so much? Nah, see, yeah. That's better. Uh, Mr. Hornet, uh, were you at the grocery store on the day of this incident? That microphone should be okay. Nah, see, I was near the bakery section looking for some fresh sourdough and perhaps to get a donut from the, from you know, like the little compartment thing and then eat the donut as I was going through the grocery store and they'll be none the wiser by the time I reach the checkout counter. You were planning on stealing a donut and eating it in the store. Yeah, it was the perfect crime. Okay, well, you're not on trial here, Mr. Hornet. Did you see Sassy during maybe part of the exchange wherein she... Uh, I guess created some sort of identity crisis within the employees and was chased into a back office? Nah, I did hear some commotion right around the uh, pet food and women's needs uh, aisle. The and women's needs aisle? <laughs> well, it's not my fault that Albertsons put them right next to each other in the same damn aisle. I don't think it's right. Okay, well... Can I be... Should I be in character still, or am I... Oh, I'm sorry. I assume this was your personality. Uh, you're doing uh, the Green Hornet. Yeah, wh what's your real name? What's your real personality? I'm Clark Debussy. Clark Clark Debussy. Okay, and Clark, uh, w when you were just telling me all of that, was that in character as the Green Hornet, or were you Clark at the store? It was like being filtered through the Green Hornet's personality and the way he speaks his vernacular. Got it. Okay, well, Clark, after you saw uh, the defendant, Miss Sassy, here run into the back office, uh, did you hear anything unusual on the intercom system? A lot of screaming, a lot of, uh, you don't know who I am, I don't know who I am, get off me, don't, don't throw that at me. Um, sir, this, this is an express lane. You're going to need to have less than 15 items to be in this lane. Um, which, you know, in hindsight, I'm like, maybe that wasn't sassy because... Yeah, that last one sounds like something that might be not said necessarily over the intercom, but by an employee of the store. Exactly. Unless her identity crisis, maybe she thought she would be working at the Albertsons or something. Interesting. Okay, well, thank you, Clark, for your testimony. We appreciate you coming in here. I assume you've got to get back to the boardwalk. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share before we let you go? Nah, time to pick up my sidekick, Kato. Guess where he is? The Panda Express. Oh, okay. Nah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. 
Green Hornet, aka Clark Debussy. All right. Um, so that was some interesting testimony, Sassy. It does seem to incriminate you, which you've kind of already done by admitting to the fact that you ran in and overtook the uh, the intercom system. But perhaps there was a reason, your own safety, it seems like. You were fearing for your life. Were you trying to use the intercom as a way to protect your well-being? Yeah, it's like self-defense. Got it. So what did you say on the intercom that might have, uh, you know, saved your life? Oh, um, come and get me. <laughs> okay. Can you understand how that, given the context, might have rather than, you know, seemed like an invitation for assistance, rather seemed like an invitation for further violence to the people who were trying to attack you? I think that the way I said it at the time, I was trying to say, like, please come and get me, like, pick, like, like Uppy, pick me up. Can you give us a line read of how you how you said it into the mic? Come and get me. Okay, to me that seems like a taunt. That's but that's just that's me that's me being really vuln actually. Really what? Vulnerable. Did you just abbreviate vulnerable? Yeah. Vuln. Yeah, that's, that's how the kids say it, George. Yeah. I, Never heard that. Can I show you a caricature I made of myself? You did a self-portrait caricature? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, let's have a look. Wow, it's a, it's a question mark. Yeah. Enigmatic. That's pretty deep. I'm having a rough time. It sounds like it, like yeah. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a caricature artist with no money, and I've just ruined all my friendships by revealing that I don't respect or value any of them or seem to know anything about them. Um, and uh, so at this point, I'm just pretty much, the, the best I can do is seal myself off while also just talking real crap. It sounds like this may have been a, a cry for help, mm. Sassy. It sounds like it sounds like you are you're deeply lonely uh, and unsure of yourself, unsure of your your choices in life, and and perhaps this act was a cry for help. Uh, I, I do want to offer our our jurors an opportunity to ask you some questions directly to get to the bottom of this, and remind jurors that if you subscribe, you can submit written testimony. We only need twelve more subs, and then we get to go shoot a guy. Uh, but now, jurors, if you have uh, any questions for Sassy that you'd like to ask directly, go ahead and ask them now. Sassy, you can take these questions directly from the jurors. Okay. Go ahead, jurors. If you have questions for Sassy, write them in the chat. Sassy, how cool was it to talk in the intercom mic? Uh, it was pretty filthy and disgusting because those people are filthy and disgusting. Are you sorry you did it? No, I was defending myself and defending yourself is not a crime. I can't draw the family guy because he is also unknowable. Um, please ignore the judge, you are awesome and loved question mark. Uh, that's my favorite question so far. Um, what was it like to be disgusted about talking in the intercom? That doesn't make any sense. Um, Sassy, thanks for being vulnerable and no real talk, no talk. Do you like bugles? Um, of course I like bugles, but I consider them regular fingernails. Um, do I have any questions for you? Yeah, I do have a question for the chat and the jury. And my question is, um, you all look like you have blank faces to me. Why is that, you know? What's your favorite part of the grocery store? Um, the Sharpies, because uh, they you can eat them also. <laughs> Um, have you ever drawn the man on the moon? Absolutely, and I nailed it right away with a circle. All right, I feel like we've asked, uh, asked and answered quite a few questions here that should paint a, a pretty, well, I, I don't know if it's painted a, a worthwhile picture of our defendant. That That's something that we should really leave to our defendant who's already done that for us in a way. But we've certainly learned a little bit more about our defendant here, and so in just a moment, unless anybody would like to call another witness uh, or submit some more evidence, we are going to bring it to a poll to decide whether or not you, the jurors at home, have found our defendant, Sassy McBride, guilty of the crime of using the grocery store intercom without permission. So, Sassy, I'm going to give you now an opportunity to make some closing remarks, and then we're going to put it to a vote. Here's the thing. I'm a gifted artist. I went to a prestigious school with many older people at it. The Apple Store. <laughs> the Apple Store tech 
class um, in the mall. And here's the other thing, is that running away is not a crime. And being loud is also not a crime. And running into a room that's not your room is also not a crime. And telling people that they have no personality to speak of is not a crime, especially when you admit that you also don't have a personality, even though your name is Sassy. And that is unique about you, but that's sort of end of list when it comes to unique. So what I'm saying here is no crimes have happened. Um, and nothing has happened at all. And if there's a courtroom sketch artist, I would like her to do her worst. Wow, quite the closing remarks. Let's go ahead and pull up the poll now. Uh, jurors, you've heard it all, you've seen it all, and you've seen some valuable uh, witness testimony. Or wait, did we have a witness for this one? We did, right? We had, oh yeah, we had, we had the Green Hornet. Uh, some valuable witness testimony. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we had any visual evidence during this one, but certainly enough to go off of and make an informed decision on the vote. So jurors, the polls are open. Go ahead and vote. It's looking like we may have our first innocent verdict. Whoa, wait, stop the presses. We've got a piece of visual evidence. Hold on, close the poll. We got to take a look at this piece of visual evidence. We're going to, we're going to re-vote after this piece of evidence, but we had a last minute piece of visual evidence in here that may sway our jurors. So let's have a look at this. Okay. Okay. What is this? That is looking like one of those rock salt lamps that has been put into a bowl of pasta. Yeah, um, those are some other groceries that I did need from the store. You but bought a rock a salt lamp? Well, did I buy it? Did I borrow it? What did I do? I went to the room. I was in the room. I was in the room with the intercom. It had a kitchen. I was hungry. You made it, yourself a little pasta. It was dark in there. I needed a lamp. Put it in the pot. Yeah. Well, that may have just broke this case wide open. <laughs> Oh my goodness, and a subscription from Internet Crow. Thank you, Internet Crow, for your subscription. Let us know if you want to submit written testimony. But we are going to open up the poll again. Uh, so let's get that vote up again. We'll see if that piece of evidence... Now, it seemed like before that piece of visual evidence that the jurors were on your side. However, with that new damning piece of evidence of a salt lamp in a bowl of pasta... We'll see whether or not that had any effect on the jurors' opinions of you. I think that trying to make my own meals should make me less guilty. And I was multitasking. And, um, salt and pasta is also sort of a question mark of a meal. And I think that reflects the state I was in, which is pleading the fifth which is pleading insanity. Well, no, pleading the fifth would be choosing not to speak at all. No disrespect, but how would you know? I'm the, ju I'm the judge. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I am the judge. People say I undermine them all the time. So yeah, I I'm feeling undermined. I hope that's not happening, but... It is, you're making me feel, frankly, disrespected. Are you short? No, I'm. look how high up I am. No. That's a chair. I mean, he's standing, actually. No, I'm not. I'm sitting down. If I was standing, I'd be way higher up. You're sitting on a really tall chair. <laughs> yeah, but I'm also just tall. Is that a toupee? No, it's my real hair. Okay. Okay, close What's the poll. Bad? Close the poll. Close it up. Oof. Jurors, you voted, and you've decided, close it all the way, that this defendant is not guilty of the crime of taking over the grocery store intercom. Congratulations, Sassy McBride. You've convinced the jurors that despite admitting to the crime, you uh, had a, a, I guess, a, a good active defense, uh, which was that it was out of self-defense. So congratulations. Is there anything you'd like to say before you leave? Yeah, I think that we came to the conclusion that what I did was not a crime and pretty much, and I can not do a crime and I can like do no wrong. 
Well, I'm not sure if that's necessarily <laughs> true, but you are innocent, and so I'll let you say it right now. Take care, Sassy. Thank you so much for coming in. Bye, Judge. <laughs> Bye, Sassy. <laughs> well, folks, we did it. We got our first innocent defendant, and that, you know, the system works, all right? Those who are innocent should walk free, and that's what happened tonight. We've had two guilty defendants, one innocent defendant, so we're uh, two and one right now on the night, but we've still got some more waiting in the wings for you to give, uh, cast your judgments upon. I'll remind everybody that you can submit evidence uh, in a variety of ways during the trial, either visual evidence in the Everything Now Show Discord, uh, bringing a witness to the stand for $5, or submitting written testimony. Uh, Internet Crow, do I ever feel like a failure? Asks Juror Theophorina, never. I always feel like whatever the outcome that happens, that was the correct one, and in that way, I'm always right. Uh, I'll remind everybody that if you subscribe to the show, you get to submit written testimony as uh, Internet Crow uh, recently did. So Internet Crow, if you'd like to submit written testimony for this next trial, go ahead and write it in the chat. They said uh, they're holding it, so they're probably going to see what this next person thought. Perfect. Uh, and then just a reminder to uh, all the rest of you that if we get just a mere 11 more subscriptions, 11 more folks, it's not that many, we will go to the firing range and you will get an opportunity to shoot people. So it's so fun. It's very fun. I highly recommend it. Let's get those anonymous donors who drop like 10 at a time to just pop in here real quick, get it done. We'll have a good time at the end of the uh, show tonight. But we've got some more business to attend to for the time being. And that is, of course, our next defendant who stands accused of a crime, which I've forgotten. So if you wouldn't mind jurors at home, please let me know what crime this next defendant stands accused of. Go ahead and suggest some crimes in the chat. Took a cookie from the cookie jar, not picking up dog poop. Uh, keep them coming. Stole the declaration of now dependence. Whoa, that's a high crime. Uh, saluting the Liberian flag before you notice that it wasn't the American flag. Wearing jorts, not dropping 10 subs. Uh, took candy from a baby. Miming in a non-miming area. <laughs> Illegal slop transport, faked a stroke, uh, put poop in my shoe, attempted regicide and high treason. Thank you, what a disaster, for helping us reach our goal. Um, <laughs> thank you, casually average. There we go. Thank you, everybody. Let's hit that goal. Um, wearing Crocs and socks, Stealing drugs from children, pooping in the courtroom, uh, courthouse stairs, slapping a hoe, stole videos from the new video store. Stole videos from the new video store. We're going to take that. Yes, in the age of internet piracy, most people are used to videos being stolen in the digital mainframe known as the interweb. But what most people don't realize is that a lot of movies are still getting stolen the old-fashioned way. Yes, from video stores, not unlike the blockbuster of old. Our town has one uh, humble little video store that sells DVDs and VHSs, and to steal from such a small mom-and-pop shop like that, well, of course it's stealing, but it hurts a little bit more knowing that you're taking away from just a small business and one that's trying to keep uh, uh, an old art like hard copy media alive. So I hope that this next defendant isn't actually guilty of this crime and these this was just some big mistake. Uh, but that's the crime they stand accused of, stealing movies from our local video store. What? Defendant, please state your name for the record. What did you say? What? Uh, you are accused of the crime of stealing videos from the video store and I asked for your name. I'm not to blame, no. What's your name, sir? Uh, uh, what, you what? Your name, sir. What is your name? Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus. Hello, do you it's understand? It's new, it's new. What's new? Neiman Marcus. Your name is new? The no, no. The shirt, the, you said was a shirt. I'm sorry, what are you, you saying? You said, what is the shirt? I said, Neiman Marcus. No, I asked what your name was. Is that not your name, Neiman it's Marcus? It's so bright in here and cold. I'm sorry, that's, I can't control ah. the lighting. It's just the fluorescent overhead lights. Ha! Ah. Uh. Sir, do you need a pair of Oakleys Do you or need something? sunglasses or something? Our bailiff could maybe lend you his. 
Is it, he's, he, he's a kid? No, the ba <laughs> the bailiff is an adult man. You uh, boys work here? We're gonna give you some sunglasses, sir, so that you can see. How's that? I don't. It's, it's also Neiman Marcus. Your name? The hat. No, you said what's the hat? You're also a Neiman Marcus. We're gonna just gonna call you Neiman Marcus, sir. It's close to the house. I walk. <laughs> We've got witness testimony. Okay, we've got some witness testimony here, some written testimony. Let's have a look at that. Casually Average says, whatever they did, I'm against it. And couldn't agree more. If this crime was in fact committed, we should all be against it because the crime of stealing movies hurts all of us. Someone's got a tit out, what? No, nobody has a, excuse me, sir? Somebody's got a tit, Nobody where? has their tit out, sir. I can kid it up. I need I can you. still make it happen. No need to brag, sir. Not all of us are so lucky. Let's get back on track here. It's Mr. so cold in here. Mr. Marcus, uh, you're cold? You're wearing a scarf, sir. It's freezing. It's not freezing. It's quite temperate. Oh, God. Mr. Marcus, you stand accused of stealing films from a local movie store. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Are you familiar with the local video store? Yes. Okay. Do you have you been there before? Have you been inside the store? Have you rented movies? Yes. Okay. What what sort of movies do you like to watch, Mr. Marcus? Joyride. Joyride. Okay. With the little girl from Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Oh, okay. A bit of a cinema cinephile, are you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Marcus? I don't touch kids, no. No, I mean you like watching movies, sir. Of the children? Of a, of any variety. No. You don't like watching, you just, okay. I well, don't find them attractive, no. I see, okay. Well, uh, we've got a bit more written testimony here, which I'm hoping is gonna get us back on track. Let's have a look. I saw them put the DVDs in his Neiman Marcus jackets. Wow, okay. It was on sale. It was on sale to the jacket. That's some damning evidence from what a disaster. Uh, Mr. Marcus, we have a, a witness here who says they saw you commit the crime. Okay, and who was that? It was a juror, what a disaster. I feel like this is going well. I don't necessarily agree with you, but there's still a lot of trial left to be had and some more written testimony to look at. Bailiff, I feel like you and I are hitting it off. Well. I'm not really at liberty to have that type of relationship with the defendant. We're probably about the same age, right? How old are you? 27. Okay. Thank you very much. You look terrible. I saw the TikTok of that girl doing the ice cream and I, it aged me terribly. Oh, you saw that? Okay. Uh, we have some more written testimony, Mr. Marcus. Let's have a look at that. Now, Internet Crow says, I saw this guy taking a copy of Happy Feet out of the return bin at the, at the video store. That's two people now who say they have eyewitness testimony of you committing the crime. You know, I saw that film back in the theater. You saw Happy Feet in theater? Yes, it's a long time ago, of course. But I saw it in the theater. That came out in like, what, 2005, I want to say? You know, you don't know what that was like, maybe, but you used to be able to go and they'd have in, the, in there, they'd have seats, but not like the couches they have now in there. They would have seats with gum on them. <laughs> right. I, I guess I, they still have that. People chewing gum and sticking it under the chair instead of throwing it away. They used to let you vape in there. <laughs> okay. I don't think that's true. I don't think vaping was even a thing until... There was like, about a month where they, before they started get, catching wind of the fact that people thought they could vape in the th theater. And were you doing that? It's the, from Neiman Marcus, the hat. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Marcus... So I Mr. Marcus, you are accused of stealing films from this local movie store, and we have now two people who have uh, claimed to have witnessed you doing that. Uh, do you have anything to say, maybe an alibi for why you it couldn't have been you? Uh, no. Okay, well, I feel like this is pretty much an open and shut case then. Uh, I'm going to see if we have any more testimony do, bailiff do we have any more testimony are you are you oh, like that are you do you do what that little girl does with the ice cream 
Do I do what that little girl does with the mm, what are you talking ice about? cream? Mm, yum, yum. Oh, the TikTok, the TikTok girl who does the. Um, in a way, I kind of do it, but I feel like what we do is a little bit more production quality. Uh, thank you, you VTech. Let us me. know who you'd like to bring to the jury box. You frightened me. Um, in just a moment, we're gonna figure out who it is in the jury box. Gang, um, gang. So, uh, Mr. Marcus, she does the gang, gang. On I, I want to try to help you out here so that you she can does have a the fair gang, trial. Gang. <laughs> It seems like it seems like you might be unfit to represent yourself here today. So I want to try to help you out. What what do you do for fun that uh, isn't watching movies? Maybe something that you would have been doing rather than robbing this store. Well, back in my day, we used to make vertical videos. Normal. <laughs> you used to be able to just do a tight. 60 second bit with a character, you know, and a text based thing. It's like type of woman you meet at an adult party. And you would do a sort of a voice, and, and it used to make sense. It all used to make such sense. You could do vertical videos of stand up, you could do, ver you could do podcast clips. Are you talking about Vine? What? Are you talking about Vine, the short lived, uh, like, Short video is like six seconds. You would make a, a video on Vine. Talking about IG. Oh, okay. <laughs> Remember right. Instagram? Remember that? Yeah, that's still a thing, Mr. Marcus. Listen. Uh, now they do. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Marcus, we so have, confusing. To we me. we hope I understand. I'm frankly pretty confused too at this point. So we're gonna. My name's not Frank. Right. Your. We don't know what your name is. You have not told us that. Uh, the hat is from Neiman Marcus. Right. Well, I haven't you, told you the hat. I just told you the hat. No, your name, sir. Your name. Okay, we've got a defendant on the witness stand. I game, now. yeah. Uh, let's go ahead. You guys are almost certainly going to be cropped out, but let's have a look at these defendants. Okay, and Mr. Marcus, can you get out of there, shot? Thank you. And who is it? What shot? What? Nope, Mr. Marcus, oh God. you're Ugh. breaking the reality Dear of the shot. Please. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in so that Six we don't feet. do that. Six feet. Who is that on the witness stand? Who are you? It's, State your name for the record. It's me, Neiman Marcus. Oh, you're, you are the designer, Neiman Marcus. And who is that with you? I'm Wade Shaky. I work at Movie Town in New York City. Oh, so you're okay. You're the owner of the shop. All right. Typically, we do these one at a time. Uh, is there a reason that you guys came here together? I abide by the six foot rule, but he happens to be sitting next to me. Yeah, they just told me to go up, and then they said Neiman Marcus is also here, so I don't know. It's fine. Um, this man is an imposter. I'm Neiman, Neiman Marcus, <gasps> world class famous designer. This man is a smelly old Jones, if I have anything to say about it. Wow, okay. Uh, well, Mr. Marcus, I guess thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here and, and give this testimony. Please, refer to me as Neiman Marcus when you refer to me. I'm sorry, Neiman Marcus. Thank you. Neiman I saw this man peddling for cash in the stall in the bathroom. You, wait, in the, did, I'm sorry, did you say in the stall or in the store? In, 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 in the stall, earlier outside the courtroom. What's oh, that? You, in the courthouse bathroom, you saw this guy doing what for cash? I don't know, but it sounded like gurgling. <laughs> gurgling for cash, okay. What's that? What? Uh, well, I'm gonna get back to you. There's in just a, a witness? Second, sir. What? Yeah, there's a witness, the real Neiman Marcus, the, the designer, the guy I'm who designed a... your hat and jacket. He's sitting right over there. I'm more of a Nordstrom rack man myself. Okay. <laughs> God, oh. he smells like garlic. It's true, he does. He has garlic in his pockets usually when he comes to the store. Ugh. And also, he was he gargles at my store as well. Oh, it's a thing God. he does. Um, Put this man away. Okay, well, uh, it seems like uh, Mr. Neiman Marcus, I, I think you are completely unrelated to this case as far as I can tell. It seems like I'm you're just only... here to clear the air that I'm Mr. Neiman Marcus and this man is not. Got it. Okay. Well, noted. And thank you so much for that testimony, Mr. Marcus. Can I go now? Yeah, what you're is... you're free to go. Cold uh, like Mr. Shaky, if you could just stay for a second. You're the owner of the store. You are presumably familiar with our defendant here, whose name we don't know. Do you know his name? Does he have like a membership wait, card? Or wait, something? wait. You want my name? Yeah. Oh, Billabong. <laughs> what? B Billabong. Billabong. Yeah. 
Is that your, is that like your last name? What? Uh, you, your name is just Billabong? Yes. It's, it's William Albert Bong? Bong. <laughs> Will, oh, Bill A. Bong. William Albert Bong. Okay. All right. Thank you, uh, Sh Mr. Shaky. Is that Wait, all I was needed yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah, I get high. What? Okay. <laughs> he does at my store. <laughs> Mr. Bong. Uh, I try to keep it lit and goaded with the sauce. <laughs> right. It seems like it seems like uh, social media has taken sort of a toll on your psyche, Mr. Bong. I used to understand it, you see. I used to be able to go on my favorite sites. I used to be able to go on. <coughs> Can on you the cover Twitter. your mouth when you do that? <clears throat> you can't. Uh, I used to be able to go on the Twitter. I used to be able to go on Instagram and it all made sense. It all clicked. It all was content digestible, easily comprehensible. It all made perfect sense to me. And then now there's the yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Gang, gang. <laughs> ice cream, ice cream. Yummy, yummy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right, right. I'm familiar with the videos that you're talking about. The people who are interacting for small, you know, nominal amounts of money in exchange for acting as, I guess, like sort of like NPC characters in a video game. Ice cream so good. Ice right. cream so good. Well, Mr. Bong, I'm going to give our jurors now an opportunity to ask you some questions directly. And I'll remind our jurors that we only need nine more subs. Then we go down to the police station, shoot some people. So jurors, if you have any questions for Mr. Bong, uh, now is a chance for you to ask them directly. Mr. Bong, I'll direct you over to our jurors in the juror box here. You can answer their questions. Uh, as they start to come in here. Um, oh, it does seem... I don't watch like Fox. <laughs> Did I do something wrong? Uh, well, we, we can only... We can see I don't watch Fox. It's for message. old people. I, was, I went unselected. It's so big. I stay woke. Thank you. Your Honor, I'm scared. What am I re what am I looking for? Uh, questions, Mr. Bong. You're supposed to be answering the questions from the jurors. Oh. How about that one? Uh, how's the ice cream? What? What are you talking? What? What do you mean? For me, ice cream? Where? Do you have it? Okay, let's go ahead and bring it to a poll now for Mr. Bong, uh, where you can vote to decide whether or not he is guilty of stealing videos from the video stores. So in just a moment, jurors, you will be uh, voting to determine whether or not he's guilty. Mr. Bong, I'm going to give you an opportunity now to make your closing remarks. <sighs> I remember so long ago. So, so long ago, I remember you used to be able to just be a hype beast, like a cool kind of guy where you'd give away lots of stuff on YouTube and you could do numbers, big numbers. Nowadays, you gotta be a little harlot and lick and stuff and take a lot of money. Yeah. Thank you, that it? Internet that Crow, for gifting a sub to Milking You Guy. Really visual uh, username. Thank you so much. Internet Crow, if you'd like to submit some written testimony for this particular trial, you should do it very quickly because we're about to vote. Otherwise, you can save it for the next one. Uh, go ahead, jurors. You can now vote to determine the guilt of Mr. Bill A. Bong. Uh, that's a one for guilty or a two for not guilty. What did you think of everything everywhere all at once? I liked it. I, I think it was one of those things where it like it got overhyped and because of that it you know maybe then it got the reverse thing where people started shitting on it because everyone was like, Oh, this is the best movie. But it was good. It was definitely good. I think it was just like I think similar thing happened to La La Land where it was like it was a fine movie that got way overhyped and then the pendulum sort of swung back and people started shitting on it because it became like uncool to think it was good. To me, it struck me as extraordinarily twee in a way that I found rather grating. There's a sort of, um, hmm, 
a lightness to it, a sort of playfulness that I found uh, at odds with just my general uh, mien, you know. And and I'll I'll further clarify. I found all of the performances to be wildly inauthentic, except for Short Round. Okay, his name's not Short Round. He played Short Round, didn't he? Yeah, but that's not his name. Okay, it's it. I mean, yeah, but he played Short Round, so in a different movie. Okay, well, fuck you. Okay. We all know who I was talking about. All right, let's go ahead and close out the poll. Back in my day, you used to let children sing and dance. Used to let them have a lot of. Used to be able to have a lot of fun. You and know. That's... Nowadays, you got to do Rick and Morty in your movie, or else you're 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 sunk. Okay. Uh, what if Bugsy Mr. Malone was like had like a Rick and Morty ex- like alt universe thing? That would be very interesting, Mister. Uh, Would that be fun, Mister Billabong? The jurors have voted, and they have determined that you are guilty of the crime of stealing from the video store. And uh, Condor Condor Man says, "Bussy Malone." You know, you used to be able on social media to just have a fat ass and it would work. <laughs> get to the wide. Oh, get cut off. It's so big. Look at that. Used to be able to have a fat used to be able to have a fat ass and it would do everything for you. Yep. Okay, well, now you got to lick ice cream or something. What is the punishment? Let's stay is... in the wide. Let's stay in the wide. <laughs> what is the punishment for Mr. Bong more like, here. More like Bussy Malone. Can we cut back to me, please? More like Bussy Malone. Yeah, someone already said that. <laughs> someone, Did they? You missed that joke by like Great minds think minutes. alike, I guess. Um, We're going to go with... Ra- racial sensitivity <laughs> training. Yeah. <laughs> after, after those comments about... Uh, Why? Because I like around? a movie with Scott Bayo in it? Is no, that it? No, because you called that... Uh, uh, what what is his actual name? Keith? You don't even know his yeah. fucking name, asshole. Yeah, well I know it's not <laughs> short round. I know I know multiple films from his oeuvre, and you don't even know his name. All right, racial sensitivity training for Mr. Billabong. It is so ordered. Can we punch in on the ass? No, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get out of here. You're Look done. This. Caked up. You're done. Okay. Goodbye. All right, folks. Scott Bale was Morty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're a mere eight subs away from hitting our goal of going to the police station where you will get a chance to shoot people. But it doesn't seem like we're going to hit it. So we are going to move on to our next trial. I'll just remind everybody, my name is Judge Learned Hand. I I preside over this court, but ultimately it's up to you, our jurors at home, to determine the guilt of these uh, alleged criminals who will stand before us. You can also submit evidence in a variety of ways. You can join the Everything Now Show Discord and submit visual evidence that we will display on this television right here. Uh, We've had a lot of really groundbreaking visual evidence that's cracked a lot of these cases wide open. I'd love to see some more in these uh, few remaining trials. Of course, for $5, you can bring a witness to the witness stand. It could be anybody you like. Uh, In just a few moments ago, we had a famed fashion icon, Neiman Marcus, take the stand. Although it seemed like a case of mistaken identity, uh, he was there, so that was cool. And we got the guy who owned the video store, sort of a two for one deal. Not sure how that worked out, but it did. Donate $5 if you'd like to bring somebody to the witness stand, anybody at all, celebrity, fictional character, somebody who's related to the trial, that'd be great for me. And uh, of course, if you subscribe, you can submit written testimony as we've seen already. Let's get eight more subs and hit our goal. Uh, But in the meantime, we've got another defendant who's gonna be taking the defendant stand. So if you wouldn't mind, jurors at home, please tell me what this next defendant stands accused of. What crime did they commit? Contempt of court. I feel like that is applicable to pretty much everybody who's stepped foot in this courtroom (laughs) so far. Uh, Drinking milk with circular ice. That is bizarrely specific. Uh, Crime of banana. That is bizarrely uh, ambiguous. Assaulted a vending machine, slop trafficking. Uh, They dropped their smartphone without having a heavy duty case. Uh, Sexy jaywalking. 
Telegram fraud, cat called a woman, fashion crimes, witchcraft, uh, gave a sign language interpreter a stroke. What? Jesus. <laughs> Pouring milk before a uh, cereal, uh, taking a shortcut, jumping on stage at uh, Cats the Musical. They ate habanero cheese. Ate habanero cheese. Um... I'm going to take uh, a version of Fulu's suggestion, jumping on stage at Cats and Musical, but we're going to say disrupting a stage performance. And we're going to figure out the, the details uh, of how what stage performance that was and how it was disrupted uh, during the course of the trial. But, you know, people put a lot of effort into crafting a theatrical performance like that. There's actors, of course, but there's music and technicians and directors. Uh, and, and those people work very hard to put on a production like that, and a lot of money gets spent on it, only to be ruined when somebody uh, jumps up on stage and causes a scene, causes a distraction that causes the entire uh, production to be halted. And, and that is why that is a crime in this jurisdiction. Well, this next defendant stands accused of just such a crime, and so we're going to figure out what production it was that they disrupted and how it was that they disrupted it, allegedly. Uh, defendant, please, if you wouldn't mind, state your name for the record. Hey, uh, 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 <laughs> my name. You all right, sir? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to uh, talking in front of people uh, so much. Uh, I'm Hawk Daddy. I'm sorry, Hawk Daddy? Ah, hey! What is that? What are you doing? I'm a rider die. I'm, I'm part of a hawk. Hawk Daddy is I'm, it's my biker name. I ride a hog. Boom, boom. I see you're part of a, a collective of bikers. Okay, all right. Calm down, Hawk Daddy. <laughs> Sounding less and less like a hawk. <laughs> now we're getting closer. Uh, all right. <laughs> There it is. We found it. Try. It took me a second to find that. All right. Hawk Daddy, I'm going to need you to just speak in plain English for this to work. I'm all right? part of a bike gang. I love my hog and I love my boys. Got it. Okay. And what is the name of your gang? The Kansas Five. The Ka okay. So is it? Is there? are there just five of you? We're from Topeka. Okay. Uh, and it Topeka, Kansas. Oh, wait. Mr. Daddy, uh, <laughs> do you understand the crimes for which you stand accused today? Maybe, maybe not. All right, well, I'll explain them to you. Uh, someone you got here, funny uh, hair, man. I've got funny hair? Yeah, you got funny hair. I like it. Tell oh, well, thank you. It's sort of... It's white and fluffy and big like a cloud. That is... Where are you from, Bo? I'm from right here in New York, born and raised. New yeah. York. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Mr. Daddy, we've got... You ever ride a hog? Feel a hog in between your legs. You know, I can feel hardly anything between my legs these days. A quintet and a hog on the highway going free for Freedom Street. Can't say that you I have. You seem like you've never done that. You know, I. You don't take it like you don't. You're not the kind of guy. You're not wrong, Daddy. You've got me pegged. I've lived something of a. You've, <laughs> That's okay. Daddy, Daddy, you've got me pegged. Yeah. I've lived something of a quiet life, but uh, what what I'd like to do now is is get back on track and take a look at this visual evidence. Okay. Which I'm hoping is going to relate to the crime at <laughs> hand, that being the disruption of a local stage performance. Let's have a look. Oh. And uh, now what's going on here? That's Big Kevin. That's Big Kevin. Is he part of the uh, Kansas Five? No, no, no. He's part of the 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 Omaha Ocho. The Omaha Ocho. Uh -huh. That's it's a, a rival gang. Uh huh. Well, well, yes. They are technically rival gang. I see. And and what what is the nature of your guys' rivalry? Is it's it? mostly just. It's mostly just fun to have rivals but it's all okay on the road you know it's kind of like hey we're gonna kill you you know but we don't do that we stop at the pit stop and stuff and do pranks you it's a prank it's, it's a good like nature prank prank, prank hog culture i see okay and so was that sort of what was going on where he had those enormous yeah he teeth. was like i'm gonna kill you <laughs> but he was just playing I see. Well, uh, that's all in good fun, but uh, I guess your I'm hair's wondering... in good fun. Thank you. Your your hair is quite unique as well. My wife did it. Your wife did your hair? Oh, yeah. what a coincidence! My yeah, wife Natalie, does mine as Natalie, well. Natalie, she loves hair. And how does your wife feel about your membership in this 
Bike oh, kid. she's a hog queen daddy herself. Oh, is she? Is she one of the five? She let. Oh, oh is no. that her right there? She's got her own gang. Oh, Natalie! Natalie's here! This is my wife, Natalie! Wow, what is that on her face? <laughs> Natalie? I've had a lot of work done, <laughs> and I don't want to scare anybody. Yeah, she's going to do it. So rather than showing your face, you've put on this, what is that? Sort of like a, a plague doctor, like steampunk plague doctor? I just don't want to draw attention to myself because there are a lot of bandages and this was kind of like the only thing I could find around the house. It's my old Burning Man mask and sh that's all we got. I see. Okay. And and you are also part of the, what, what do you guys call yourself? The Kansas City Five? Yeah. Yeah. The can no. The, can the Kansas Five. The Kansas Five. The Kansas Five. So you are two of the Kansas Five. No, she not in the gang. Oh, okay. But I thought you said she was a biker mama. Well, I'm sort of a plus one situation. Yeah. So it's sort of the Kansas gang um, plus one. I, I wouldn't characterize it as such, but you know, she come along. He's made it clear that I'm not the only plus one um, due to my near constant surgeries. Yeah. Um, it's not safe for her on the road. Yeah, it's not safe for me, even though I am actually pretty well protected from anything that could fly in my face. Yeah. Um, did he do something bad? Yeah, well, he, he, the reason we're in court today is because you're, this is your husband, you guys are married? Yeah, we go pretty much everywhere together because we're so, so much just peas in a pod. We're just peas in a pod! Got Can't. it, well, maybe then you, uh, could, uh, help clarify what exactly happened at this stage performance. Your, your husband is accused Hawk Daddy. of, yes, Hawk Daddy is, is accused of disrupting I'm a, Hawk Daddy. a, sorry. Yeah. What disrupting a, a stage performance. Were you at a, a stage performance? And if so, which one? Okay, well, here's the thing. We were at a live uh, reading of um, Emma Klein's new novel. <laughs> Um, because that's one of the many things we share. To quote Larsa Pippen on her romance with Michael Jordan's son, yeah. we have everything in, co in yeah. common. That's a good book and it's gonna bring people together. What's the title of the new novel? Um, it pretty much doesn't matter. <laughs> Got it, okay. It's and this... called The New Emma Klein and it's one of our many shared interests. Along yeah, it's with called The Guest, Your Honor. But Nat Natalie got me into literature. Yeah. I see. So you guys are a couple of readers, and you attended a stage reading of this novel. And thank you, Asilius. She make me smarter. I before was just a hog daddy on the road going, ha ha, and now I got Natalie. She does my hair, and she gives me the books. Yeah, I do his hair, and I give him the books. <laughs> Got it. Okay. And so you went to this stage reading of a novel and something went awry here. There was a disruption. Can you explain the nature of the disruption? Well, Hawk pretty much said that she wasn't doing any of the voices. Yeah. I wanted to hear all the, the characters. And Hawk, how do you hear the voices when you read the book? What do they sound like to you? <laughs> they sound like this. <laughs> and they sound like this. And they sound like this. Could you maybe perform a scene from the, from the book it, with the voices? Hey, yo. Come here, son. I want to teach you a lesson. But, Dad, I'm scared. Oh, no, God! There's a fire in the barnyard! That was the scene from... Uh, uh, that was the scene, my favorite scene. It was towards the end of the, mo the play. And she's just reading it like, I want to teach you a lesson. Uh, I'm scared, Father. Oh, no, there's a fire in the barnyard. I'm like, what? This lady is crazy. <laughs> I see. I could understand how that would be upsetting to you. It really sort of disrupts, takes you out of it. I yeah, think. I wanted, I, you know, I wanted, a, I wanted entertainment. Yeah, I think that Emma Klein is pretty jealous of Hawk's stage presence. Look at me! <laughs> he can, he, oh! really, he gets a lot of attention. I'm a hawk, daddy on the hog on the highway. And also she's jealous of me because I can attract somebody like Hawk. Yeah, she um, ride my bones. Yeah, that's something that single women are always doing. And I got hot kicks. Yeah, they see his high kicks and they're like, I don't know why I can't get someone with high kicks. I'm going to get down. I see, okay, and so <laughs> how did, and so how did that make you feel seeing your husband up there disrupting Emma Klein's book reading? 
Well, I wouldn't say disrupting, but I think more than anything, I was proud. Thank you, baby. Yeah, that's how why our marriage works, is because I'm proud of this guy. We support each other. The fact that I like him is why the marriage works. Mm -hmm. If I didn't like him, the marriage wouldn't work at all. And if well, I didn't that's, like you. That's understandable. Well, uh, we do have some more visual him. evidence here. I'm not sure, uh, maybe this relates to the, the reading or something that happened shortly thereafter. Oh, okay. And we've got a witness. So let's look at this visual evidence first. Bailiff, is that is that ready to be uh, shown? Yes, I mean, sir. I mean, judge. Oh. Okay, so this says become a funnel. <laughs> and is this related to maybe like motorcycle riding or something? That's or what is we this do. A philosophy? Yeah, on the highway at the beginning when the Kansas five, we guzzle that gas. You dr you drink the gas? <laughs> Put it all up in our bowl and our blood and our... No, no, I'm playing with you, dog. No, you are. I forget. You guys are pranksters. I'm a prankster in nature because I got a prank. Do anything. Omaha Ocho. <laughs> so, what does it mean to become a funnel? Well, if you want to be a funnel, you got to think like a funnel. The Jake, beat. Jake, do you want to cut to me? Sorry. Oh, we've got a. Uh, oh. We've got a witness on There's the stand. There's a guy here. Yeah. Jake, do you want to cut to me, please? We got like three well, I'm, Jake. I'm not sure who Jake is, but we do. No, have... just go, Jake. Cut to me. I gotta just press the button there. Oh! Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Freddy. Okay, how's the show been so far? Oh, we're doing this? This is how we're gonna end it? And they gave us 500 bits. What are you gonna do? They want it. All right, well. I was liking Hawk Daddy. Uh, I, I, I guess we're bringing Daddy. the fourth wall. Ah, you know, been, so you've been doing good, bro. Ah, hey. Ah, ah. Thank you, okay, thank you. That's a big me. stick you got here. Winnie, shake shake no, Winnie, Winnie, Jack, you guys can break character. Oh, they oh, they paid the okay job as God always, Winnie. Just pa acceptable. Hey, let me hit the button. So we're uh, no. passable. I'll hit, hit the button. button. Hold on, hold on. Rock, may as well get Rocky okay. out here too. No, hey. I'm gonna hit it. You can't even see anything, folks. <laughs> Take the wig off. I'm gonna get that hook off, baby. Stop it. Okay. Uh, hey, how'd you guys like being on the show? You know, good. Thanks so much for watching the Everything Now Show. We do this four times a week. We do this on Mondays, on Tuesdays, on Thursdays, and on Saturdays. On Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, weekdays, also they're known as, we do the show from seven to nine, and then Saturdays we do it from six to eight. Whoa, thanks for the last minute sub there, uh, Aecilius. Really appreciate Ecle that. Ecle Ecle yeah. Thank you so much for the subscription. Folks, if you enjoyed this show, I've got great news for you. We're gonna be doing another one tomorrow night, same time, same place, so if you had fun, come on back. It's not going to be a courtroom. It's gonna be something totally different, but it'll still be interactive comedy. Uh, and if you want to submit images for that show, Join the Discord. Get all the information about the show, when it's going live, secret events, I don't know. Join the Discord, there's good shit in there. Uh, also, make sure to follow us on all these social platforms, especially the YouTube. We're trying to get to a thousand YouTube subscribers so that we can monetize the channel and uh, quit our jobs. So uh, make sure to definitely check that out and follow the show here too so you get notifications, I guess. Uh, thank you to everybody who subscribed, who donated for evidence, who brought witnesses, all you guys, we really appreciate the support. Um, and we had two wonderful guests tonight, uh, so let's give a big internet round of applause uh, for Winnie and Jack. Winnie and Jack! Woo! Thank you, thank you. This is what we look like. This is us. We're just two the, people. The real us. Little did you know. Regular did you guys. Know? Yeah, two people. There are two people. Winnie, Jack. Hey guys, what do you guys have going on? What do you, the you people have any What you got going on? You can watch the reality show that I associate produced. It's called Claim to Fame. And it's, I think it's airing 
Right, it's You're Missing It, but it's on Hulu. It's You're Missing It. Fame. It's the one with the viral clip of well, Tom, um, Hanks Tom Hanks' niece. niece. Yes. I just realized what that is. Yeah. Asking that show's it. awesome. It's really cool. It I seems like a fun. fake show that you would see on like 30 Rock, yeah. but it is yeah. real yeah. Uh, and it looks awesome. You so definitely go that. check it out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'll plug that I'm um, getting married in two weeks. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Yeah. That's all I'm plugging. That's all I'm plugging. Mazel big, top to Jack. I'm it's getting married. Big hot for betrothal. Yeah. yeah. I'm not available, okay? Where can you get tickets for that wedding? Yes, where yeah. can we get tickets? Um, Is Eventbrite. It it's on Eventbrite. Just, <laughs> yeah. look up, uh, just look up Big Jack's wedding. Um, Check it out. It's at the yeah. Yard Theater. Yes. You can't miss it. I think it's at the Elite. Yeah, the, it's at the Yard. Yeah. It's at the Yard. Uh, yeah. Head over there. there. And it's pay what you want. Okay. Ooh, yeah, see? Uh, There's a cooler Modelo. Yeah. Okay, fine. Open um, bar. Folks, <laughs> thank you both for being on the show. Thank all of you for thank watching you. the show. That's, That's all nice. we have for tonight. We're going to raid somebody. Uh, who are we going to raid? Let's. I'll Good go question. Tomorrow, we're going to have Mary Basmagian? I yeah, so. and, and and Alyssa, Alyssa Scholl. Scholl. Yeah, yeah. So and I, I want to thank everybody just real fast. I know we shouldn't get too personal when we do these things. I just want to thank you all so much for your contributions to the show. Every single dollar that you have given to the show in the last three months has gone directly toward me getting a exactly. fake ass. I mean, you need to it turn wasn't a cheap, bit folks. More wow. like this. That really shows right there. the cake. Oh, there it is. There's a bit of a shadow. There's a bit of a shadow here. If I get it, there it is. Yeah. And the camera just. Yeah. I'd like to say that. Uh, Every dollar goes to good that news. Was, that yeah. costs yeah. money. 100% really nice. Real ass. That's all you folks. We yeah. Have I have a Hank Hill style butt if you want to look up what Hank Hill style butt is. He has a really yeah. tiny butt. Hank Hill's yeah. got a tissue. It's a prop. A small Hank Hill tissue. It's, it's true. Um, oh, I feel like I deserve this. Slowly but surely, we're going to bimbo five me. I kind of want to. And we all want to have really big asses. So give us more money. You don't get any of it. <laughs> I mean, my ass looks. I never get any money. Yeah, it does. My ass looks it's actually enormous. Yeah. We have a fish eye lens on. Your ass looks this? bigger than your my ass. Yeah. Looks wait, hold on a second. Wait, 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 hold on a fucking minute. Hold on one fucking second. All the money is going to me. What the fuck am I looking at? Are you fucking kidding me? I have a fake ass in I don't have you. a fake goddamn thing. Yeah, in you got so holy shit. Incredible stuff. I'm never gonna get this. That's why he's getting wiped up. Okay. Say hi to Tom for us and uh, come on back here Almost. tomorrow oh. night. Oh, hey. 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 Bye. When did I get such a big dumper? Dang. You'll never beat me. <laughs> <laughs>